Filed 8-12-2, 2016. It's bigger than you think. Islam. Give me a minute. I gotta get my phone. It's bigger than you, you know. Wait a minute. Can you let me, let me get let me get my silk on live? All right. If you don't mind, it's because they've been. I told them it was gonna start. So take take notes. This is a a, a general statement. I'll repeat this in a minute. Um, you that you what? wanna. I'm gonna move. That have way. in this form, or you can not, you can modify it, but you must understand the nature of it. You know, like saying two and two is four. Four times one is four, right? Three and one is four, which means if you come up with the equation, that's the concept that you must have that's here. Understanding that is bigger than what you know. You want to say that? Ready, Jed? Right. Ready. 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 Welcome to the house wait, of Reawakening wait, wait, Minds. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. It's a bunch of people. Listen to this all over the world, so I gotta gotta get it, gotta get my live. <sighs> Welcome to the house of we're awakening minds. Now, this particular statement, you must have an understanding, a concept of it, and why this statement is made. And this statement reflects a knowledge of how world politics actually works, not what the masses are generally given. And of course, you all have been exposed to much coming to the House of Ram and um, reawakening minds. Now, whether you use these words like you see it or in the context, this would indicate a competent air <coughs> in relationship to what's really going on on the earth planet. Are we clear? Now this is predicated on your knowledge of the fall of the Red House and the construction or the operations of what is known as the uh, Global World Trust set up by the Vatican after the fall of the Red House in Andalusia, um, which is later called Spain. And the Red House is the palace of the Emirates of the Moorish Empire. And that's 1492. 1492 is measured by world scholars as the axis year between the fall and dissolution of the old Muslim world and the modern Constantinian operations, which are disguised under the Christian operations of the New World. And so when you hear the, the, the light, lightly projected phrases, old world, new world, that's what they're talking about. And so when they're talking about the old world, they're talking about the, the fall of the Moorish Empire, which includes all of African and Asian countries collectively. This is what you must understand. Do not get caught up in the idea <coughs> and the misrepresentation that when you hear Islam, and Christianity in the context that you hear it generally that they're really talking spiritual in the concept that, that most people think they're talking politics on earth plane. And they're talking Asiatic, uh, Asiatic pardon me, Orientals, original peoples versus hybrid Occidental European Roman peoples. Are we clear? So you're talking about the rise of the hybrids. All right, the hybrids are known as Romans. Today, Romans, after the Wigamore Party split after the Nebraska-Kansas Act, and around 1854, after the split, um, Horace Greeley, uh, who was a U New York newspaper tycoon, um, suggested that the, the new members of the what became the Republican parties would take on the noble title of the Moors, which is white people. And so the Europeans, after 1854, started calling themselves white people, which is really a noble title. It has nothing to do with complexion. These things you must understand in order to understand the politics. The Moors are really white people. If you, if you get caught up in the uh, Carlos Linnaeus and Johann Blumenbach 
psychology for the U.S. Census Bureau, you will be caught in that false matrix thinking that white and black are complexions of skin, their political statuses. This, if you don't understand that, understand that you are subject to not ever regain your estate. Are we clear? And these code systems were set up um, in, um, they had a couple of conferences on semantics where the high priesthood deliberately introduced connotative linguistics so that you would adopt them and then when you use them you would actually talk in yourself into hidden contracts or abandonments of your estates. Do you understand? We won't get into that right now, but I'm pointing this out to you because you need to know that because you also have co-intelpro co, um, co operatives even amongst our own people who are accelerating to convince our people that they're black, knowing that it has nothing to do with complexion, it has to do with legal status. And many of their so-called black organization leaders have a skull and bones agreement called a 501c3 kickback. And they usually disguise it as um, a tax exempt gift from Jesus. But it's really a skull and bones agreement to keep the, the uh, misinformation going on. All right, but the issue is black is not a color in the concept that the people think it's a legal status. And, it, and there's nothing wrong with black, so when people are arguing that issue, don't get caught in that. The issue is descendability. I mean, if they, if they called you pinstripe green, when it comes to a state, if you are out of the pedigree bloodline of your forefathers and your foremothers, in law, you're no longer inheritable. That's the reason they use the brand system. You must be clear on why the brand system functions. What is its function? Not that, oh, they call us a lot of different names. That's not the issue. It didn't matter what they called you, as long as they took you out of your pedigree and you agreed to it or you start practicing it. In law, the function and the intent is to make you non-descendable and thus, Every so-called foreclosure under the United States Corporation Company will be declared as, a, as an abandonment. They're talking about abandonment of estate. And so when our people, out of, of both ignorance with some, and out of uh, fear with some, and out of compromise with some, who agreed to the brand system were not told and did not know that they were abandoning their estate. Are we clear? And scholars and people that know that what this functional branding, they're actually called nom de gear. The branding process, what it, its real function is, never teach what its function is. They'll argue complexions, shades of skin, when it's really descendability. But that's a diversion and they count on the fact that most people don't know the function of it, and therefore they never suspect that they're being played by their own so-called leaders. Because usually the leaders, if you do the research on the, on the eugenics program, particularly with Margaret Sanger, you'll see that the major instrument that they use in our community was the so-called black pastor preachers. You understand? So, and that's not personal against them, that's the, that's the political fact. If you cannot handle that, understand, don't be planning on liberating your children or your family because it's not going to happen. So don't put emotions in front of it, look at the evidence, look at the facts. Do some research and you'll see for yourself. And you'll see also why some people get very, very sensitive and defensive when this information comes out as if the truth is a, creates trouble type thing, you know, because what it does, it's sort of like it kind of exposes Judas's few pieces of silver in his pocket, not just the Europeans. It starts exposing people who you trusted in amongst your own, who've been safe because they have not been suspected. You get the point? Now, <clears throat> understanding that when the Red House fell, that the you know, Bishopric, now the Bishopric is the is the proper title for the clergy collectively. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the clergy collectively, it's the bishopric. So when you hear that phrase, and you must get used to these things, because these are the, the real people who are really running the politics behind the scenes. Can you spell that please? Bishopric. Bishop. Yeah. B-I-S-H. 
O P R I C. Bishopric. That's the clergy collectively. And this is another reason why this thing, this corruption, has actually um, been kind of safe or, as you would say, secure, because the very ones who are really the movers and shakers behind the scene, or what some people would call the demon, is the very one that is standing up claiming spirituality. That's why it's just tough as lasted so long. And of course, this is also why it's been so protective. And then the people themselves, out of ignorance, always associating the bishopric with Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, etc., never suspect them. Are we clear? And this is, a, again, why, even though you know our people are, they may lack certain information, but they're not dumb. They're very, you know, that they've even survived some of the stuff that we've survived with all the pressures. That they're intelligent, it's just that they lack information. And because of their, their dogmatas that they've adopted in the name of beliefs, the, the dogmatas have actually been the elixir that actually protects the priesthood. And this is why they can't never fix anything. Now, understanding the real politics, and don't take it personal, understanding the real politics, this statement is a reversioner statement. And this is actually like from the reversioner article that we, that we, um, wrote up before. Now, there was a, a brother Saul, Paul Savage Eels shared with me a small uh, statement of reversion um, a couple years ago. And so what I did, I interjected it into article of uh, Herodotus in um, Lesson Book 14A1 because it fit right in. But what I did, I expanded on it in concept, you know, to make it more clearer knowing more history than it was telling. If you, you know, like when you, when you get conscious people and they write something, you can see that they're conscious, but you could also see that, also see that they're limited. Do you, do you understand? And so this statement basically is a statement that you would use um, in any interchange that you may have with any of the corporate entity operators from the... Um, police departments, to mortgage foreclosures, to credit claims, to any law case, any legal case whatsoever. And it's necessary because most people are not aware that with every case or every issue that comes up before any of those private tribunals that they call courts, they're not really courts, they're private tribunals, um, that there's a bond created with every issue. And um, most of the issues are exercised ex parte. And uh, ex parte is really where they're speaking, but you really have no say, even if you're there. Because the declaration is under the Unum Sanctum policy that you're lost, you're dead and lost at sea. And this was set forth after they uh, uh, initiated the Spanish Inquisition and particularly with the fall of the Red House where they declared the Moors and their descendants dead at sea until proven otherwise. And that's the foundation of all the miseries of Asiatic African peoples. Not someone not liking your skin. And scholars all know this. However, and we don't even have to go into it, many of them are paid off not to go into this information. And then, of course, many of the so-called leaders are 32 and 33 Green Masons, and they already got defos to the Pope anyway. They wear your fez, they do, yes. because they're, they're ruling in Morocco, you know, but um, they're sworn to secrecy. You know, so all the so-called black leaders have been taken to the mountaintop, and the mountaintop is the Great Seal Pyramid, with the Eye of Allah at the top, or Horus, etc. And it is the sovereign seal of the ancient Asiatic Moabite Canaanite nation on Earth planet and the symbol of civilization on planet Earth. So when you see that Great Seal Pyramid with the eye, they'll always try to give it a negative to make you ignore it or to make you reject it when it's actually the sovereign seal of your forefathers. And the only president to ever use that seal was John Hanson, the first president. All right? 
And that's another part of your history, but you need to know this. So we're going to get back to this. <clears throat> now, basically, what they, they operate on is what, you call, what is called presumed jurisdiction and presumed abandonment. Now, keep this in mind because we're not going to go into all these details, but the I, I, reason I want you to take notes because each one of these things that I state is a whole body of information in itself, but it will give you reference points. Are we clear? And of course, we don't have enough time because you would have to be totally re-educated if you get the point over years. But enough reference points after a while, the puzzle starts coming together. Are we clear? So write this down. Air jurisdiction, land jurisdiction, sea jurisdiction. And you must understand these things, and we won't go into detail right now, but the distinction between them, because everything that is done, everything that's buy or sold, anything that is moved in commodities, in uh, resources, in conversation, in language, in politics, air, land and sea jurisdiction is always involved, always involved. And you need to understand that, not that we're gonna go into it right now, you need, that has to be in your mind because you need to know how is it when you're going before a high priest, as an example, they'll, um, they'll tell you to call them judges, they're really not judges. They're administrators of the Global World Trust for the Popes of Rome under the Spanish Inquisition, imposturing as judges. Keep this in mind, there's been no lawful judges operating on the land since the coup d'etat of 61. And actually, at the same year that George Washington was appointed, actually, you know, so. So, but, but in fact, since May 10th of 1861, there's been no lawful operations of courts on the land. Are we clear? All scholars know that, all politicians know that, all leaders know that, all this shopper know that, the masses don't know that because the masses have been the food. Are we clear? You don't argue with them and expect them to admit to what is being said right now because they've been beneficiaries of it. Do you understand? So many of them who have not been the direct corruptors have been the peripheral beneficiaries and therefore are not likely to admit to this. Are we clear? All right. <clears throat> Now, I want you all to read this together. We're going to read this together and try to soak this into your mind. And then whatever comes up in your mind, let's just talk for a minute. You know, we'll go into some other things, but let's just talk. Feel free to talk. No question is dumb. All right? No question is stupid. But you need to understand what's being said here. All right? All right, let's read you all. I, the living man, and rightful heir, am not lost at sea. I affirm and declare my right of reversion of the state, and I make no claim with respect to the title and misrepresented name, man of straw and non de gear being a title, and the spurious creations of the foreign de facto United States corporate operators, actors, and owners. And I surrender any, and, and I surrender, pardon me, and assign any and all reversionary interest to the foreign United States and subsidiaries for full acquittance, discharge, settlement, and closure of my reliance. Title 12, United States Code 95A, Part 2. And I assume no liabilities or debts, however contrived, among its associates. And I do not consent to stand as surety for the foreign United States, U.S. corporation entity owners, directors, or administrators, nor for its subsidiaries or associates at any point or moment in time. Now, what that does, that interrupts the movement of U.S. T-bonds which have been on your back since the Civil War. But you need to have known that. And that's the foundation of the theft of your birthright that Noble Drawley is talking about when he set up the old Canaanite Temple in 1913 as a countermeasure to the Roman operations at northwestern Mexico, Turtle Island, North America, land of the Moors. 
under occupation. And of course, as you know, even to this day, with our people, with all the education they have, most of them don't know they're standing on Morocco. They think that the United States is the country. The United States is the corporate entity belonging to the Jesuits that has been occupying and administrating powers, plenary, what is called as plenary powers on the land jurisdiction of Morocco, Northwest Territories, Northwest of Maxim, Northwest Africa, Turtle Island, the North Gate, Temple of the Moon and the Sun, land of the Moors. That's the great Masonic secret that all the secret societies have been hiding from you. And you're the heirs to the world's largest estate. And every time we sit and talk and complain about the things that are occurring to our people, as long as you don't know the real history, you're declared incompetent. And thus a ward of the state, and thus non-heritable. Are we clear? That's why it's important for their operators amongst us to keep pushing the black game because it makes you not heritable. Are we clear? Now those, when people begin to wake up a little bit, you'll see some of the uh, so-called operatives start arguing about more means black and black means this and we're really black people and it means melanin in the universe and a commit and all that. Well, that's a COINTELPRO operation. A scholar knows it, but a person who doesn't know language and doesn't know this history will not suspect it. They just think they're talking semantics, you know. Well, you know, it's different complexions and it doesn't matter what color you get into them. A scholar already knows that person is sick and really don't know what's really going on. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And of course, when people lack information, they have a tendency to get emotional. And then the COINTELPRO operatives will spur, spur arguments and debates against people getting them fighting with each other to divert from what's really going on. And that's a reversion of a state is really your issue. Not racism, not what color you are, it's your loss to state. That's why you've been poor. That's why you've been struggling. That's why your babies been dying on the street younger and younger. That's why 90% of the people in jail are Asiatic Africans because you're the heirs of the estate and what they want to do is remove you out of circulation. Do you understand? And then to keep you pacified, give you dogma in the name of religion and then arguing with each other with a bunch of, you know, stick each other, whoever got the best God and love type stuff, which is really hate, you know, and so that maintains the schism. And the schism is the military term they use for divided and conquer. Mm -hmm. And understand that what I'm telling you, that all of your big time <coughs> leaders and clergy know this information because they get it in degrees. However, they get a few pieces of silver to keep this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And it may be difficult for you to accept that, but grow up and understand that that's how things operate. And understand this. If it were not true, they would not have been able to maintain this thing so smoothly for all these generations. And that's what people say, they keep on saying it's not a conspiracy type of stuff. You know, now, so this statement, when you're making this statement like as an example to an administrator of a judicial venue, you're dealing actually with a deputy Knight of the Vatican and the Pope of Rome. Mm. When you're looking at him sitting in the East, because they're usually designed all the courtrooms mm -hmm. like the, the temples of the East. In, in Hikupta, they'll tell you it's Egypt, it's Hikupta. And they'll design that triangle. And then the Magi is sitting there on the pedestal, mm -hmm. and then you're sitting here and. This is the Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're using your own stuff against you. But anyway, so keep it, keep that in mind. Are, are there any questions about this? Oh, let me let me go into this Title 12 so that you will understand, because I want you to understand what that is too. All right. Um, excuse me for a second.
maybe up further. How many of you know what that 95A is? Can I hear somebody say something? Yeah, I don't have a clue. Well, that's a good answer. Well, see, because um, Morocco is under occupation and they're dealing with uh, trust and estate, they are obligated actually being administrators over the global world trust. Keep this in mind. Because the Pope set up a global world trust to control or to administrate over conquered lands. That's why there is no allodial title operations at North America. You can only get mortgages and deeds. Since 1913, all allodial titles were converted into feudal law deeds and mortgages as a countermeasure to noble draw aid. So prior to 1913, all property was held in a lodial title. Are we clear? Yes. So you must understand that to understand the politics that's taking place now. If you don't understand that logically, if you're arguing a state or property that you think that you own, you may be arguing and not knowing that you're sharecropping. So until you step out of that status, knowingly, you're still declared incompetent. Because all property has been hypothecated. Are we clear? So, hold on, excuse me. This is still on the stage of editing. Um, and the rule has some of it, I'm giving the rest of it a little later. But anyway, what, what it, it concerns with is by law that all what you would call spending that um, comes, from, comes from you who are the beneficiary, actually they're supposed to be giving you all vouchers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you see a car that you want, the, the, the car's already paid for. They're supposed to just give you a voucher and you take it home. And so you can understand why the so-called black leaders who are paid off don't want you to know this information. The same thing with the politicians. And you can understand why they have all these summer houses and you don't. And why a reverend has a parish and you don't. To keep this information from you. And then to attack people who expose this information. Making you think that they got devils and stuff like that. You know, because our people are already under that devil spell. As soon as you say devil, they get, their eyes get crossed and they get weird. <laughs> they do. You know, all you got to do is say devil and Satan and stuff, and they really get strange on you. Quickly. And this is also, that's called dogma. And this is also help keep them, keep them from power. Um, hold on, hold on. Somebody on the line just said, there goes that Taji guy teaching the people again. <laughs> 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 but, um, and, we, and, and, and the other reason why I want you to get, get used to that statement and, and get an understanding of that statement, the nature of it, is because if you have the consciousness of it, it will change the atmosphere if you're ever talking to any of them in any legal matter, a lawful matter. Because they would recognize that if you knew this much, you know more. It's not good, brother. I have a couple of questions. Yeah, Give, we got another mic, because we want to make sure that they Right there. Okay. Make, okay. make sure that. Just right beside you. Back. Uh, you said, are you, is that mic on? Oh, Make sure it's on. Test. Good. Okay. Um, you said the, the old world was the fall of the Moorish Empire. Yeah, so, that's called the old. That's called the old Muslim world. Actually, that's what it's called. Of this, the old Muslim world of Islam. That's what it's really called. Okay. My question is, 
the rise of the hybrids, which were rovers, is that starting up the new world? That's the new world. That's what they call. And 1492 is used by sociologists and historians as the axis year. That's only like a landmark. That's not absolute, but that's what's used as an axis year. So prior 1492, the Moors ruled. After 1492, Europeans ruled, or what you would call colonial powers. And what is the Red House? The Red House is the Alhambra that Michelle went to when, when Obama and them left, and she went to the Alhambra, and he went to Egypt and exposed that the American Constitution come from Muslim law. He was giving you part of his history. Okay, I'm still not clear. What is that? Alhambra is, you might have heard of it as being one of the uh, seven wonders of the world. It's, it's, um, it's a Moorish palace of emirates for the caliphates in Al-Andalus, which they later called Spain. Okay. That's not Spain then, it's later called Spain. You'll, see, you'll hear them say the Moors in Spain. You'll hear about the Renaissance when the Moors went into Europe in the 12th, 13th century to the 16th century, brought the Europeans out of darkness into light, built cathedrals, synagogues, churches, and all your major universities of Europe were built by Moors. Your forefathers. And after you fall, to block the history out, they branded the Moors Negroes and Blacks so they couldn't trace their history. Okay. This is why so-called black leaders keep promoting that black thing to cut you off from your history, not knowing that your history is all over the planet and the knowledge that your forefathers set on Earth runs planet Earth. And have you rejecting your own knowledge, thinking that's the white man stuff when you're really the white man. And this is how this thing is run. And then that's, that's practiced by so-called Muslims, Christians, and Jews amongst us who've been promoting what they know is a fraud. And got people, you know, with all kind of self-consciousness about complexions and stuff, and they ain't got a damn thing to do with anybody. So they've been keeping us in the dark purposely. Well, that's what your slavery is. And it's mental. What, what is the coup d'etat of 61? Coup d'etat of 61, in 1861, let's, when we went through over this again, but let's talk the history so you'll understand the connections. Abraham Lincoln was a member of the Bar Association. According to fatwa, which is Moorish law, from which the American Constitution is derived, a member of the Bar cannot hold an office in the United States or under its jurisdiction because they were deputy knights for the Pope of Rome under the Inquisition to overthrow all republics. That's your secret treaty of Verona that conjoins Spanish Inquisition operations. That's called your nobility clause, which is original article of Amendment 13 with its 20 sections that all Masons have, all scholars have, but the masses don't get in school. Do you understand? That's called the nobility clause. All right? Now, Lincoln could not run for president of the organic United States, which is the agreement between the Muslims and the Constantinians tagged in history as Christians. All right? That's to stop the hundreds of years of wars between the Muslim world and the Constantinians, coming from the Punic Wars and up to the Christian Crusades and up to the Battle of Tours, 732 near Poitiers, France, on up to Lake Michigan of 1812. All these are series of the same war. They're just different generations. Do you understand? Right to the day. Do you understand? Now, to stop the hundreds of years wars, this is where the agreement of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship evolved which is the world's longest running treaty, which Obama talked about. And that's the treaty that was set up between the Moors and Deists, who are known um, by scholars as the so-called founding fathers. That's Jefferson, you know, yeah, Madison, uh, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, ETC, they were Deists, they were not Christians, they were Deists. Do you understand? And Deists, are, are those who study the, the culture of the Asiatics. Deity de, 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 
is actually derived from Dialti, which is the proper name of the planet Mercury. The planet Mercury is a communication center for this particular solar system. All right, so now you're going into other history that's not really taught to the masses. And so the communications with all of the other entities, etc., or planets, is where you get the loose term deities, but then you get the monotheistic thought where it says there's only one deity. Yes, because there's only one Mercury. But what they have not told the masses is the anthropomorphic presentment of the science of the universe as religion for children that is not taught to the masses, they're left in the child's degree, which is why the people don't know the science of the universe. So when they're looking at the, the, the um, angels or what you would call the guardians, they would have them with wings and stuff like that, but that's for children. When you become an adult, you put your child's things away and understand that they're flying crafts. Do you understand? But they kept the, the adults on the stage of children, and this is what also gave the priesthood the opportunity to keep the masses in the child's state of mind and divided against each other, and then they suck on them like vampires. And then they create the mystery devil and tell them their misery is coming from the mystery devil. And then when the prophets come to liberate the people, they murder the prophets and then accuse the mystery devil of it. And this has been going on for quite a few generations. One more question. Yes. What are UST bonds? T bonds, well, I'm finished telling you the story. Okay. Because this is where you need to know where they came from. So Lincoln could not run for president because he was a member of the bar. So, in 1754, Benjamin Franklin, who was a deist, in preparations for the agreement that was on the table but not yet solidified, set up a United States Corporation Company, it's important, United States Corporation Service Company in France. Keep that in mind. And this history, you can see this history is done because if you don't know this history, you cannot know the politics. When you, when you hear people talking about, you know, Trump, Hillary, Bush, Obama, any so-called administrator of, or praetor at North America called president, they're really praetors, right? Um, if they don't know this history, it's impossible for them to be cognizant on the politics. This is why the politicians can do all the dirt they do because they know these people are totally miseducated and have the mentality of children by design. By design. Are we clear? And can at any time and at all times be declared incompetent. Now, all right, now let me um, finish so you'll understand. So Lincoln could not run for president for the organic agreement on the land jurisdiction. So they ran him for president on the United States Service Company that was promised the contracts to do what you call temporal governmental operations and services on the organic land, though it was registered in France. Are we clear? It's a private corporation that belonged to Benjamin Franklin. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So it's not to be confused with Society of Republic of El Almoricanos which you come to know as the United States Republic at North America. Do you understand? Now, they ran Lincoln on that platform because that was given the advantage of controlling the enumerating powers on the land jurisdiction. Are we clear? All right. Didn't take long for Lincoln to recognize that they were using him to undermine the Republic. Are we clear? under their secret treaty of Verona, of which him being a member of the bar logically would technically have allegiance to. He went about the business of preserving the republic, so he deliberately bankrupted that United States corporate service corporation in France. That put a target on his back. Are we clear? This is what will give you half the history talking about the greenback thing without telling you all this other history. Only Masons get this history or Skull and Bones, Knights Templar, Keiklos, Ku Klux Klan, Union Guard, Knights of Malta, Illuminati. The masses don't get this information except the high priest or somebody in the Adam Chamber of Morris Science Temple or after the supreme wisdom in some degrees in the nation of Islam. 
But the masses don't get this information, are we clear? That's why the masses never have any power. They're just believers and they're followers, they pay all the bills and get screwed all the time. Do you understand? Now let me finish telling you, because so you, so you, I'll probably answer some more of your questions too. So they ran Lincoln for president on that corporate entity in France. Upon recognizing that he was going, he knew he was going to be, be assassinated after that. It, that was already in the works. Was no doubt about it. It's just a matter of when. It wasn't a matter of if. Are we clear? He did a couple of cases, making the distinction between Moors, Negroes, and Blacks being as people of the same blood, different legal status. Are we clear? That put a target on his back. Then he did a case for uh, 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 Charles Chinoquay, who was a member of Opus Dei. That's one of your secret orders in the Vatican. That put a target on his back. So he did the Emancipation Proclamation to undermine them again because they were doing this go west young man stealing all of our land. And then we, we already put into the works for a restoration of the estates back to the descendants or the Moors. This is why you see them dressing Lincoln in Moorish clothes in, 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 mm -hmm. in, in 1800s. Mm -hmm. When he was running for president, you see him have pantaloons, bolero, mm -hmm. the double sword, etc., curly hair. That's making mockery of him because he was countering them. So the Emancipation Proclamation was also projected plans for restoration of the estates that were being uh, hypothecated, all right? So they modified the Emancipation Proclamation three times before they issued it in 65. Then they murdered him, got him out of the way. But the Freedmen's Bureau that was already set was opened up in 1865. Every man, every woman, and every child was going to get a minimum of 40 acres and a mule, plus finances for all structures and maintenance, and enough finance to build back up all that they lost, which means they would have backup so that they would not fail. So they squandered the, the Bureau, it's called the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands. That's the proper name. They squandered it, closed it up. And in 1868, they gave that United States Corporation Company in France that Lincoln bankrupted the quality of person, quote unquote person. Mm. Are we clear? <coughs> and then they created a double stock trust so that they could convert the estate of the descendants of the Moors to that corporation entity in France that Lincoln bankrupted. And upon that, they created the U.S. T-bonds, and that's the beginning of the fictional argument of the United States being a nation, which it never was. Are we clear? And that's where you get the origin of what is called the national debt that really doesn't exist. And thus, the theft of your birthright, upon understanding that knowledge, now you understand why Noble Drali in 1913 set up the old Canaanite temple for the enforcement of the Constitution and the treaty and the restoration of the rightful heirs to their estate, thus nationalization. And that's why the United States Corporation Company collapsed in 1913, and that's why Woodrow Wilson met with the bankers from England and Jesuit order off Jekyll Island and sold the government and set up another United States Corporation shell in Puerto Rico and then there's another story but there you go that's the origin of your UST bonds since the Civil War and all of them is on your back. Do, do um, the clergy and our so-called leaders that keep us in the dark, do they benefit from... That's what a 501c3 is for. That was set up by Skull and Bones member Lyndon Baines Johnson after they murdered Kennedy for trying to counter the same thing that Lincoln did with executive order, I think it's 11110. And that's the restoration of Article 1, Section 10 to the American Constitution as a countermeasure to the coup d'etat of 1861. 11 days later, he was dead. Okay. So, I mean, like you say, so supposed, in theory, we're supposed to be able to walk into a car dealership and get a voucher. Do they, this is do the they point. Even, no, they, this is the like point. That. You're the heirs to the world's largest estate. 
You're disallowed to handle any money because they came here to steal our gold and silver. And they created what is called debt notes on their private T-bonds. But by being administrators of the world global trust and we being the rightful heirs, when we need something, it's supposed to be given to you. Because it's already yours. Ten times over. They couldn't give you enough. No, there's nothing that they can give you that will begin to meet what is already yours. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Do I'm telling you what's supposed to be, and that's what that 95A is. Okay. That you, all, the, all the debts are supposed to be discharged by those trustees, which is the United States Service Corporation. Some people that know a little bit of this information, this is where you get people talking about discharge, discharge. and accepting for value. That's a peripheral look at this information without having a solid background. And upon a challenge, the magistrate can... The date, 12-2-2016. It's bigger than you think. Islam. Give me a minute. I gotta get my phone. It's bigger than you, you know. Wait a minute. Can you... Let, let, me, get, let me get my phone call live. All right. If you don't mind, it's because they've been, I told them it was going to start. So take, take notes. This is a, a, a general statement. I'll repeat this in a minute. Um, you that you want to have in this form, or you can, not, you can modify it, but you must understand the nature of it. You know how I like to say two and two is four? Four times one is four, right? Three and one is four, which means if you come up with the equation, that's the concept that you must have that's here. Understanding that is bigger than what you know. <coughs> you want to say that? Ready, Jen? Right. When I get ready. on here. Welcome to the house wait, and we're wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. It's a bunch of people that listen to this all over the world, so I got to gotta get it. Got to get my live. <sighs> <laughs> Welcome to the house of we awakening minds. Now, this particular statement, you must have an understanding, a concept of it, and why this statement is made. And this statement reflects a knowledge of how world politics actually works, not what the masses are generally given. And of course, you all have been exposed to much coming to the House of Ram and um, reawakening minds. Now, whether you use these words like you see it or in the context, this would indicate a competent air in relationship to what's really going on on the Earth planet. Are we clear? Now, this is predicated on your knowledge of the fall of the Red House and the construction or the operations of what is known as the uh, Global World Trust set up by the Vatican after the fall of the Red House in Andalusia, um, which is later called Spain. And, uh, and the Red House is the palace of the Emirates of the Moorish Empire. And that's 1492. 1492 is measured by world scholars as the axis year between the fall and dissolution of the old Muslim world and the modern Constantinian operations which are disguised under the Christian operations of the new world. And so when you hear the, the, the light, lightly projected phrases old world, new world, that's what they're talking about. And so when they're talking about the old world, they're talking about the, the fall of the Moorish Empire which includes all of African and Asian countries, collectively. This is what you must understand. Do not get caught up in the idea and the misrepresentation that when you hear Islam and Christianity in the context that you hear it generally, that they're really talking spiritual in the concept that, that most people think they're talking so that you would adopt them, and then when you use them, you would actually talk in yourself into hidden contracts or abandonments of your estates. 
Do you understand? We won't get into that right now, but I'm pointing this out to you because you need to know that because you also have co-intelpro co, um, co operatives even amongst our own people who are accelerating to convince our people that they're black, knowing that it has nothing to do with complexion, it has to do with legal status. And many of their so-called black organization leaders have a skull and bones agreement called a 501c3 kickback. And they usually disguise it as um, a tax exempt gift from Jesus. But it's really a skull and bones agreement to keep the, the uh, misinformation going on. All right, but the issue is black is not a color in the concept that the people think it's a legal status. And, it, and there's nothing wrong with black, so when people are arguing that issue, don't get caught in that. The issue is descendability. I mean, if they, if they called you pinstripe green, when it comes to a state, if you are out of the pedigree bloodline of your forefathers and your foremothers, in law, you're no longer heritable. That's the reason they use the brand system. You must be clear on why the brand system functions. What is its function? Not that, oh, they call us a lot of different names. That's not the issue. It didn't matter what they called you, as long as they took you out of your pedigree and you agreed to it or you started practicing it. In law, the function and the intent is to make you non-descendable. And thus, every so-called politics on earth plane, and they're talking Asiatic, Asiatic pardon me, Orientals, original peoples, versus hybrid Occidental European Roman peoples. Are we clear? So you're talking about the rise of the hybrids. All right, the hybrids are known as Romans. Today, Romans, after the Wigamore Party split after the Nebraska-Kansas Act, and around 1854, after the split, um, Horace Greeley, uh, who was a U New York newspaper tycoon, um, suggested that the, the new members of the what became the Republican parties would take on the noble title of the Moors, which is white people. And so the Europeans, after 1854, started calling themselves white people, which is really a noble title. It has nothing to do with complexion. These things you must understand in order to understand the politics. The Moors are really white people. If you, if you get caught up in the uh, Carlos Linnaeus and Johann Blumenbach psychology for the U.S. Census Bureau, you will be caught in that false matrix thinking that white and black are complexions of skin, their political statuses. This, if you don't understand that, understand that you are subject to not ever regain your estate. Are we clear? And these code systems were set up uh, in, um, they had a couple of conferences on semantics where the high priesthood deliberately introduced connotative linguistics of foreclosure under the United States Corporation Company will be declared as, a, as an abandonment. They're talking about abandonment of estate. And so when our people, out of, of both ignorance with some and out of uh, fear with some, and out of compromise with some who agreed to the brand system were not told and did not know that they were abandoning their estate. Are we clear? And scholars and people that know that what this functional branding, they're actually called non the gear. The branding process, what it, its real function is, never teach what its function is. They'll argue complexions, shades of skin, when it's really descendability. But that's a diversion and they count on the fact that most people don't know the function of it, and therefore they never suspect that they're being played by their own so-called leaders. Because usually the leaders, if you do the research on the, on the eugenics program, particularly with Margaret Sanger, you'll see that the major instrument that they use in our community was the so-called black pastor preachers. You understand? So, and that's not personal against them, that's the, that's the political fact. If you cannot handle that, understand, don't be planning on liberating your children or your family because it's not going to happen. So don't put emotions in front of it. Look at the evidence. Look at the facts. 
do some research and you'll see for yourself. And you'll see also why some people get very, very sensitive and defensive when this information comes out as if the truth is a, creates trouble type thing, you know, because what it does is sort of like it kind of exposes Judas's few pieces of silver in his pocket. 